so excited to be able to talk to you all today because I get to talk about my favorite things. One, my hometown, Burley, Idaho, and the other thing, local search. And we get to combine them together. So uh, here you go. This is Burley, which you've been waiting for since you bought your ticket to see this. We have mountains, we have snow, we have trees, we have water, and we have some weeds, um, and a cross. And we have Happy Island. Uh, the reason that's called Happy Island is because I kissed my crush in high school on that island, okay? And, uh, you know, I, I love my hometown, but when I was growing up and when I was in school, I wanted to move from country roads that look like this uh, to big cities that look like this. And the fun thing about this deck, I took all these pictures, so I, I really enjoy photography as well. Um, so I wanted to move to, to a city like New York, uh, but then this happened. <laughs> and this led to these. You say, ah, oh, but you do not know these. <laughs> no, um, I, I love my kids, okay? And, and, you know, we started this family in Burley. I'm from Burley. My wife's from Burley. We moved into there uh, next to my wife's sister. Uh, and her mother lives about 0.6 miles along that trail there. Uh, I found a really cool map pin to represent that place. Uh, that trail, I call it the Trail of Tears. I take it like almost daily, uh, and, and yes, okay. Well, anyway, so any, it, it, this was never gonna happen, okay? The second we moved into that house, it was just not gonna happen anymore uh, if I valued my happiness. Uh, and so now we have Nifty Marketing. This is our office. We actually have the old bus depot in Burley, and, um, and we've, we've been growing, we've been doing really well. Uh, we opened a, a another company, Nifty Law, which is focused on the, the legal niche. Uh, and and we've, we've gone through all these things and we've had all these growing challenges and we've had all of this wonderful experience in learning uh, local SEO. And I started to realize that a lot of the things that I was able to do and a lot of the things that I learned were because of lessons that I had basically acquired over the course of my time in Burley, Idaho. So I'm gonna share those with you uh, today and I hope that they can, they can guide you in your local search uh, experiences as well. Now, I know you're all interested in local because if you do any search on any keyword, mobile or desktop, I can almost guarantee that search is localized now. So if you don't care about local, it's just because you haven't been paying attention. So we're not even gonna try to sell you on it. You just should be interested. Okay, um, so lesson number one, everyone is related, okay? Everyone is related in my hometown. I am related to everybody. A matter of fact, I'm gonna show you my family tree, okay? This is called the Burley, Idaho Ecosystem. <laughs> now, I don't know how many of you know this uh, or have seen something similar to this, not quite as good, um, but, but uh, we'll talk about it. So I'm in the middle. And, and you see some, you know, the Ramseys, Handys, Morgans, Lees, Hanson. Some of these are those who have direct influence on me. You know, these are like my grandparents uh, and, and progenity friends, all, just, just everybody and their relations uh, to each other and how they're all related and how they have effect on me. And you have my wife, Hillary. Of course, she has major effect. She's the closest relationship there. So come to my surprise when I saw David Mim had ripped off my family tree with the local search ecosystem by Moz. Uh, and he just switched out me for Google Plus Local, and then he has, all, you know, instead of my relatives, he has the relationships that these different directories have with each other, and he shows how Google, you know, what information Google gathers directly. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that, but first, David, David, David. Um, so, no, it's okay. I, 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 you won't hear from my lawyers. I'm feeling generous. You just have to give me your shares of Moz. Um, so, so, the most important thing to understand from this is that a company's business name, address, and phone number need to be consistent uh, across the web, especially on these local search directories. And as Google goes across the web and as they have these different relationships, they see these uh, places where you're listed and if it's, if it's correct, then they basically put that information in your cluster, okay? Uh, and so here's examples of, of it not being correct down below there. Uh, but what we found in a recent study, uh, we looked at 100 marks across the US uh, in the personal injury law space 
And we found that the average personal injury uh, lawyer ranking one through three had about 49 uh, what we call citations, places where their name, address, and phone number appear. And in the eight to 10 position, there was, there was 54. This was really weird, because forever we've heard people say, you gotta go get citations, go get citations. Get as many as you can, you know, you need to have a lot of citations to rank. And, and you know, there's, there's credence to that for sure. Uh, but, but this was interesting, this was interesting to me. Uh, but we did another thing with this information. We looked at info group using Moz Local and found that those listed in one through three had on average only about one little error, some, some small little error. And those that were listed in positions eight through 10 had three errors. So the consistency was really off on info group. Same on Axiom, same on some of uh, these other directories that were very, very important. Uh, and and that, that stood out to me. And it told, it, it, you know, we were able to do that using, using Moz Local. And you can see here, in, in this case, this company had great data for the most part, but InfoGroup was the place that they had the worst information. And it taught me that you have to fix these big relationships first, okay? Uh, so let's look at some of those big relationships. You have Google Map Maker, you have Info Group, and you have Axiom. And we're gonna look at how you can uh, look at that information real quickly and then go on from there. So first, we're gonna use Moz as an example. I typed in Moz uh, Seattle on Express Update, and it looks like a company, I have no idea who this is, SEO Moz? Has anybody ever heard of them? Or, or, or is, it, is it, I'm not sure if that was there or not. Uh, before, but they have, they have two of those listings there. And, um, and so we can see that Info Group has that data. And then if you go to MapMaker and you type in Moz, then there's, there's two listings that show up. And in MapMaker, uh, this is a great way to check for duplicate listings, is just go there and search for a brand, and you can see what Google basically has in their, in their index for a specific company. And so here you have, you have listings that have the exact same information, okay? Uh, and so now that I have totally called out David and Moz, I'm sure I will never be invited back. So whoever does the local speech next year has to follow up to make sure that these are fixed, okay? Um, so lesson number two, reputation is built in a lifetime and broken in an instant. Uh, I, I, I wanna talk to you about a company called The Weekly Mailer, okay? Now, The Weekly Mailer uh, is our version, our hometown version of Yelp, okay? People are not fully online so much in Burley, and so, so this is a print paper that's delivered to every house in the community, and it consists of anonymous letters. That's all it is. It's just anonymous letters, uh, just bashing people. I mean, bashing uh, prominent people in the community, bashing businesses. If you want the gossip of local hometown, this is it. I hate them with a fiery passion. I hated them so bad, I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars creating my own newspaper and just combated them. I told them, if you don't stop, that I'm going to, I'm gonna start a paper and just you know, take you out of business, okay? Um, and it was because he was, a, the guy who owned this was an elected official at the time as well. But he taught me this lesson. He taught me that, that if you mess up once, if, if you make one blunder and that goes public, then all of the things that you could do over the course of your entire life could be ruined uh, as far as your reputation goes. And there's many people in Burley who's experienced this at his hand and at this paper's hand, okay? Um, and I think the same goes in the local search space with reviews. Online reviews make or break a business. Let's look at some statistics here. 88% uh, of consumers trust online reviews as much as personal recommendations. This is a study done by Bright Local. Uh, and this number has gone up year after year after year as well. Uh, and on this one, 95% uh, of consumers share bad customer experiences, okay? And I think there's only one way that, that businesses can ever overcome this, and that is to make reviews part of your customer experience, okay? And, and we'll talk a little bit about how to do that, and this is my son Joshua up here, and if you don't do this, he will kick you in the face, okay? Uh, so here's, here's one example of how this works. Uh, you can build a form like this on your website. It says, we really appreciate your honest feedback. Please fill out this very brief form, put in your name, and then just rate your experience on a five, uh, on a five question basis, you know, very poor to great, okay? If they, choose, if they choose very poor to okay, we send them to this experience. Please let us know what we could do better. That form goes directly to me. 
I even go as far as putting my name and phone number on there and, and a business's name and phone number that we build this for in order for them to get this feedback to make their business better and ensure that customers with uh, you know, trouble can be taken care of. If they choose good or great, we send them to this page. Thanks for the great feedback. Uh, we love it when our customers review us online. You know, make, go read these reviews or, or leave us a review on Google or because you can't send people to Yelp to leave reviews, we say or enjoy reading your reviews on Yelp and then we send them to actual search results instead of the actual listing on Yelp so that we don't get any trouble there. Uh, so, so this is a great way to just work in uh, a feedback system into any type of business. I love this approach. All right, and there's a tool, if you don't build this, called Get Five Stars, built by the infamous Mike Blumenthal and Dom Campbell that, that does this very thing, okay? Uh, I, I, I highly recommend it. And here's an example of what happens when a company takes this seriously. Rove Pest Control, Pest Control, I mean, it's, it's a hard industry to get reviews on. It's not a very attractive industry. Um, and if you look on this page, look at, this, look at the star ratings. Who even has star ratings showing up? Them, and pretty much them only. And they've done very well with this approach. And another thing that they do is they respond to every single review that they get because it's, it's still very few. And in looking at these reviews and looking at these responses, not only does it make them seem uh, more, uh, just more approachable and, and willing to take care of their customers, but if you have good reviews like this, this is all that shows up when you click on the review tab on Google, and it pushes reviews like this off the page. Uh, and, and it only took two. There's only two visible reviews on that first pop-up window by doing that, okay? Lesson three. Uh, to have fun, you've got to get creative. There is not much to do uh, with, with money in Burley, Idaho. It's not many places to go and play. As a matter of fact, we have the Burley, uh, whoops, we have the Burley Cinema, uh, as you can see there with the broken window to the right, um, and we have a bowling alley, okay? It's quite an old bowling alley. Uh, and so growing up, we, we just had to come up with our own things for fun. We did things like wakeboarding in canals with very little clothes on, sometimes none. Um, we, did, we did things like, like a BB gun. Uh, do you guys remember Duck Hunt on Nintendos? Yeah, great game. We did that with BB guns in real life. And, and we'd only allow one pump on the BB gun, but my friends weren't good friends. And they would usually pump a few more times and you would just run out in a field and then you would get shot. So it, it makes you strong, but it's extremely stupid. Um, so the, the idea with this though is that you can't wait for others to figure out uh, what to do. And I think our industry has a problem. I think that we wait around a lot to figure out and wait for other people to come up with creative ideas. But, but um, not only that, when it comes to research in our industry, I, I see a lot of people that just sit and wait. They, they don't do their own research. They don't do their own studies and they take people's word for it. And I just really wanna go and publish a bunch of false information and see how many people implement that. Um, but, but my challenge to you is to go out and to do your own studies, do your own tests. And I have some tests that I wanna to talk to you about here, okay? So the, the, the great thing about Burley is nothing changes in this market. Hardly any of the listings are claimed. We don't have any local clients. And so we use Burley as our test grounds uh, because it's a stagnant market, you know? No, no listings move up or down. And so you can start playing around with things and you can see what moves needles. So the review test. There's a great restaurant called Edith's and uh, hamburger joint, they're only open, get their hours. Tuesday through Thursday, 11 to one. <laughs> okay. Um, the owner's great if he likes you and if he doesn't know you or you're not from Burley, he probably won't even serve you. Like he'll just say to leave. And so he had a few negative reviews but uh, a lot of our office really likes him. So we went out, we ate there and then we added, uh, this is the screenshot from May 29th in the carousel results. So he's in position nine. We added seven reviews over a period of a month. Okay, there's some of the reviews between probably four and five stars and they were legit. Um, and on June 24th, 2014, by that time, he had moved from nine to seven. Moved up two positions. Only thing that changed, the reviews. Interesting, hmm. okay. Driving direction test. 
there's Mike Blumenthal did a really good presentation recently at one of our local university advance uh, programs about driving directions and how these could potentially be a ranking factor, and we wanted to look into this a little bit. And these are small off tests. I mean, I mean these, these are by no means conclusive, but I use these to just start to form different hypotheses and, 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 and then go for much deeper tests. But driving directions test, King Pope Phillips and Oaks, hardest CPA firm name to pronounce ever, uh, they, they were in, in position F on May 30th, 2014, and we went through with mobile phones and clicked on this, the driving directions button on these mobile results and then followed the driving directions to their office over a period of this month. And what happened was really interesting. Uh, by the end of the month, the child listing for King Popes, Phillips, and Oaks that has the same exact address, same exact phone number, had moved up to the position directly underneath that. Um, almost like it was a duplicate listing, even though it, it goes on to have uh, the actual Oaks, uh, Oaks partner listing information there. But the driving direction uh, information was the same. And so I thought this one was quite interesting as well. Next, we had a link test that we did. Uh, uh, Kim Hansen's Chevrolet, it's a used car dealership in Burley. We built 10 links. We built four exact match links. We built four branded links, and we did two naked URLs. Um, 10, yeah, OK. Uh, and, and as we did this, and as you can see here, the, the positions that they were ranking in, map listing from doing this over the course of a month moved up three spots. Organic moved up five spots, all else staying the same. OK, interesting. We did a custom category test. The custom category test went like this. We built a fake listing, all right? I had to put my black hat on a little bit for this one. I don't recommend doing fake listings for other than test purposes. Um, but we created one. It was called the Mike Firm. It's law firm, OK? Fake law firm. It's mine. And I built it in Burley. And uh, I, as you can see, I put the category personal injury attorney down there. And here we are. On Google Map Maker, if you go over to Map Maker, you can actually add custom categories. Now, this option has been taken away from just the normal ability in Google uh, My Places listings, so you have to choose a predefined category. On Map Maker, you can still insert custom words. Uh, so we inserted the keyword injury law and car accident attorney, which are more specific within that personal injury attorney space. Uh, by doing that, uh, you know, we had to wait for an approval period, and this, this approval has to be done by somebody in the MapMaker system. And so uh, during that time, I also added a picture of me taming a zebra, just for good measure to ensure people knew I was very good at law. Um, and as soon, I mean, like literally the second this listing was approved, those, those two categories, the Mike firm moved up on the keyword injury lawyer and you know, Burley Idaho injury lawyer to position D, and uh, on car accident attorney, which is usually in the personal injury space, these are some of the bread and butter phrases, uh, moved up to number one instantly. This is a brand new listing uh, just, just through custom categorization. Yet again, interesting test. Now, I don't, I, the reason I put shh on this listing here, these are the type of ones that you don't really want to tweet to you know, people from Google too often, or else those options disappear. But I did want to share that, uh, because I found that a, a very interesting one of our experiments. Uh, we also did uh, quite a few click tests. And I wanted to show a couple of those to you today. So we had the phrase burly lawyer. And you can see there's, there's one ad, three organic results, and then a bunch of local packs. And here's, here's the outcome of that. 17% clicked on local, 64% on organic. And, and this is very different than I've seen in other studies. 11% on paid, and 92% and of the total clicks were above the fold, which you can see here. The rest were down below. Uh, we used a, a really great. Uh, great tool, Usability Hub, to, to run these tests. And we had 100 participants uh, on the experiment. And we asked them, we asked them if you were searching, you know, if you were in need to find a lawyer in Burley, Idaho, uh, and you did this search phrase, which result would you choose? OK. We took the same exact search phrase and put it in a, in a mobile version and did the same study and had very different outcomes. We had a big drop in local. 
we actually had a big drop in local because in looking what's, what's truly above the fold here, uh, there, there was not local results above the fold. And 77% of those clicks were above the fold. 23% went to paid, much higher. 54% a little drop in organic just on this phrase. Now this is very, very different than we saw in a similar study that we did on um, carousel results. On this specific carousel results study, we saw 64% that were related to maps or local search, or 62, sorry. 62%, okay? Now, I don't, I don't think that you can look at any of these and say that this is across the board in any way. But what I do recommend is whatever industry you're in or whatever market you're in, run your own tests, run your own click tests and your own quick studies like this to see why people might be clicking on specific things. One of the things that I thought was very interesting was uh, one, of the, one of the listings on here it was burlylawyer.com, but that, that, that burlylawyer.com was a last name. It wasn't even, it wasn't even the town. And that received a, a large amount of clicks, and it made me want to do a lot more tests on looking at exact match domains and local search to see if they have, if that's, you know, if that was a cause of maybe getting a little more organic search clicks than I would have expected compared to localized search clicks. Okay. Lesson number four. Traffic is slow but you have to pay attention. Uh, you guys remember Happy Island? Uh, I gotta tell you a story. So when I was in high school, this uh, same, same young woman was, was walking on the road on 16th Street. It's this like, you know, old street, no lines in the road. Uh, it's just, just two lanes. Um, and I was driving along and I saw her. And as any gentleman would do, I started following her with my eyes a little bit, and she made eye contact, and I did a, a nice little slight nod, and I ran into the back of a car. <laughs> that pretty much ended our relationship. I did not live that one down. <laughs> um, and it, it taught me a really valuable lesson that you always have to pay attention not only on the road, but looking at your local search traffic, okay? Uh, it's, it's small. You know, some of you deal with lots and lots of traffic, and when you look at a, a, at a small market, uh, it might not be something that you want to spend too much time segmenting or breaking down or understanding. But for many of you who target national audiences, if you compiled all the local search traffic that you could get across many, many markets, this traffic starts getting very, very big very, very quickly. Um, and, and so I want to talk about a few things that I do not see hardly anybody doing, especially bigger brands, that they definitely should. One is tracking local pack traffic. Uh, so we've, we've been running some tests and have seen some pretty cool results. We use the Google URL uh, builder, and, and this works for pack results. This used to be done, but when blended results came out in search, which was the combined organic and local search listing, it, it stopped working, so it kind of phased out. But now that we're back to traditional uh, seven pack or three pack results, we see this working a lot more. So you go to the Google URL builder, you build a URL, you put local, let me go back to that, you put local in the campaign medium, or seven pack or three pack or whatever type of uh, modifier you, want, you would like to have show up in your analytics uh, platform. And it doesn't show up when you look at the actual URL in, in the seven pack, but as you roll over that URL, you can see that the UTM code there is showing up, okay? The tracking, the tracking URL. And we're able to take this and segment the traffic to find exactly how uh, it's performing through the rest of the conversion process this way and be able to segment that where normally you would just be looking at combined, sometimes organic and local traffic without being able to, to make a distinction there. Uh, so a very interesting thing to do. Now this works great if you have seven pack. If you have carousel, it doesn't work. And the reason why, on a carousel result, when you click on a map listing, it redirects or reroutes the search to be the brand name followed by the city with a comma and then the state identifier, okay? And so what I would recommend in that case, and then, and then as you look below, you see that it's the organic listing instead of the actual URL that you've stuck in into your, my, my, uh, your Google My Business Center. Um, so, so in this case, uh, on, on Rove Pest Controls, it, it doesn't work, but you could take for anything that hasn't been filtered out uh, Oh, that's non-provided, you could take all of, of the keyword traffic you get from, you know, brand name, city, 
and then comma followed by the state identifier and segment that traffic and be able to find similar data for carousel results. Okay, call tracking and local. Um, there's tons of debate on this. You know, there's call tracking companies say, hey, you know, put call tracking numbers everywhere, it will not hurt you. You have a lot of local search experts that have varying uh, opinions on it. Uh, I will set it straight as far as, as what I would say the average local search person should be talking to you about and telling you, uh, and that's this, okay? If you use an image on your website with a call tracking phone number, great, great. For local search, that's, that's perfect. As a matter of fact, it's super awesome, okay? Happy monkey here. You get the happy monkey award. Um, and a great company that does this is CallRail. Now, CallRail has dynamic number insertion, so you could actually assign uh, a number for, for very many things. You could do organic, you could have one that rotates out for local specifically, uh, you could do one for specific keywords, uh, for different campaigns, whatever you'd like to do. But they take it a step further and they actually allow you to do dynamic image insertion as well, so you can actually rotate these images dynamically of the phone number. So I, very, I, I really appreciate these guys because they, out of all the companies I've seen, they've, they've seen to care the most about local search and keeping things consistent. Um, if you put it on any directories, okay, especially the ones that are directly related to Google, info group, uh, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the feed of MapMaker, if you try to put tracking numbers on your Google Plus listing, uh, if you tried to do any of these different things, no bueno. Um, and if you do that, Joshua will kick you in the face. So, so uh, the, the important thing to understand here, you have to keep that NAP information consistent anywhere that Google can index that information if you want the benefits of having clustered information about your business that can, that can grow uh, your location prominence in, in their algorithm for higher rankings. Now, if you don't care about rankings, by all means, put as many, put as many call tracking numbers as you want in as many places as you want, okay? Next lesson, uh, lesson five. Be a big fish in whatever pond you're in. This is my grandpa. Um, this is Christmas, and no, he's not throwing a gang sign and he's not about to bust a cap. He was asking for scissors to open the Christmas package. <laughs> Just like this, come on guys, I saw, you know. Get your minds out of the ghetto, no. Um, he ran a local business for over, uh, for over 50 years, and, and he passed away about four or five years ago. And I was, I was raised by my grandparents and my mom, and I, I really looked up to him. Uh, as you can see his hat there, Ramsey Heating and Electric. I have that hat hanging in my office, and I, always, I have it there to just remind me of the type of business person he was. He was loved in his community. He gave away hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of free air conditioning equipment and electrical uh, things. He, do he, he worked very heavily for the Boy Scouts uh, through most of his life. Uh, he just did a lot of service in our community and he was very, very well respected. And I asked him, you know, I was like, you always talk about um, you know, trying to be a big fish in the pond that you're in, but how do you do that? And he, and he told me something I've never forgot. He said this, it's not about business, it's about community, okay? And, and this is the message that's largely missing from many small businesses' uh, conversations. They want business because they wanna make money, uh, but they don't get business because of that. And I look at my grandfather, uh, my grandfather, and many people would use him and use his services simply because they knew Bob Ramsey, they knew he was honest, they knew that he wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't swindle them and that he would do everything that he could for them or that he had already done something for somebody that they knew. And that carried on, and he was a big fish. And I see big fishes in big markets. I see big fishes in small markets, but they all have the same thing in common. They serve, okay? Uh, and here's an example of that. This is Storybook Park. This is a park that was built in Burley, Idaho, and it's, it's just really fantastic. And the way that this was built is the community came together, they got the wood, they got the plans, and the local businesses just basically took off a few days of work, and they built the park. Uh, they, you know, my, my grandpa had about 20 of his employees that he had there. Uh, other businesses had more. Some donated, hun not hundreds, but they donated tens of thousands of dollars for the equipment that it would take to, to do a really big park, and this is just a very small section of this. Um, but that's the type of thing that happens in Burley, Idaho, you know? They don't get marketing, <laughs> but, but they get community. 
and I love it because of that. And here's another example. Just the other day, I was in Dairy Queen. That's our, that's our hangout spot, it's Dairy Queen. Um, and it's about, that's like our gourmet food as well, sorry to say. <laughs> You can't beat, though. You really can't beat some of those treats, man, as you can tell. <laughs> um, but, but First Federal, as I went through the drive-thru, uh, somebody in front of me paid, paid for my meal. And, and when I got up there, they just handed me this card. It's as simple as that. And it didn't say, come bank with us. It didn't say, hey, my name's this. Call me for anything. There's no number. It just said compliments of First Federal and pay it forward. And in my community, there's a responsibility to pay it forward. When people serve you, you go out and serve others. And this is how businesses can build brands. I think that if you, if you can find ways and creative things like this to serve instead of just to market to, then you will find that you can become a big fish in whatever pond you're in. Uh, and most importantly, you cannot fake caring about local people. Thank you. work. Thanks. <laughs> I, feel, I feel good about life right now. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, you, when, when, you went over a lot of technical stuff, and that is jam-packed with uh, technical tips. Uh, what, you emphasized uh, the importance of local citation, cleanup, uh, consistency, things like that. It seemed to be one of your more overriding points. About a year ago, I had a, I had a local client, and I attempted to do a citation cleanup and I got in over my head. I ended up hiring somebody uh, that we know. For people faced with that, what's a good way to get started? Okay. Um, number one, I, I, and this isn't a plug that they've paid me to do, though I will take I, donations I, after. I did not plant this question. <laughs> um, go to moz.com moz forward slash local, and if you put in your business information, you can see how you're listed. And that's, that's most, the, the number one step is just finding out what's online about your business. And, and by doing that, you can see if there's inconsistencies, as I showed in that screenshot, with your business name, address, phone number, websites, uh, some, some information there. And I suspect that there will be updates to that tool to give even more information over time. So. I'm kind of embarrassed because I didn't know you were gonna plug no, that, but no, it, is, it is free, by the way. Yeah. Uh, let's take a, go ahead. Hey, Mike, oh, wow, that's odd. Uh, I'll step back. That was, that was a really awesome presentation. Um, we're, uh, we work for a company that has another company that ha is essentially has a distributor um, setup. So we've got something, oh, I guess I wasn't speaking too loud. So we have something like 250 distributors for one of the companies that we own. And so they essentially, distributors resell the products of our company. And so uh, we attempted to do a bulk upload of 250 you know, local, uh, local distributors, and it got rejected. Um, they said we weren't eligible for, for the bulk upload, and seemingly because they were seeing the distributors as not part of our business. Um, and so we're in the point where we're debating about going back to Google and saying, hey, but they are part of our business. They're our representatives. Any advice you can give on that? I don't know if you will be able to use the bulk upload unless they carry the same brand name and their URLs and email and your email address would match up with, with that URL that each of those locations has. Uh, and it's something we've talked to them a lot about uh, because I think it would be great as a, as a company, like if you could become a whitelisted uh, company to just upload random companies, you know, with different names and different information as long as it was trusted. But for now, it seems like the only companies that can use the bulk upload are branches of, uh, of a same company compared to maybe distributor where each company has its own brand and its own management and is, is handled differently. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, I, lo I know a lot of people have questions for Mike, but we got to keep it uh, on schedule. Will you be able to stick around for a couple hours and... Uh and have people find you? Definitely. Yeah, yeah. That, because you're a nice guy. <laughs> All right. Uh, big hand for Mike Ramsey, everybody. All right, then. Paul, thank you.